Mumbai celebrate uh, their 55th uh, anniversary of official recognition as green cities. We see significant uh, potential in cooperation with Mumbai in different areas and are ready to work together to expand our ties. Over the past 10 years, the tourist flow from India to Russia and especially to St. Petersburg has shown steady growth. We are seeing great interest from tourists from India. An important role in this is played, played by the visit St. Petersburg office uh, opened in Mumbai in 2017, where Indian travelers can get all the necessary information about St. Petersburg when planning their trip to the northern capital of the Russia. Uh, Welcome to St. Petersburg and see you in St. Petersburg. Thank you. Thank you very much, Julia, for giving a welcome speech. Uh, now I need a big applause for uh, the General Council of Russia in Mumbai. Sir, we welcome you and uh, give your speech. A great applause for him, sir. Thank you. Uh, 
very much i think next time when i moderate i should be speaking in russian yeah <laughs> thank you so now i will call uh, victoria inova the head of international department destination presentation and uh, discussion of the tourist potential of st petersburg you must see it carefully the st petersburg will offer you right from your breakfast till dinner so after dinner also you don't have to go for a sleep it's a beautiful night life also over to you a big applause always sir okay. uh, st petersburg is a unique combining rich historical and architectural heritage with an atmosphere of imperial luxury and the modern city beat. The mix of old and new is what makes St. Petersburg such an attractive destination for both city lovers and business tourists alike. The city is literally a virtual open-air museum that also has modern and creative clusters. St. Petersburg is a recognized world tourist center. It has been awarded various international awards. Some of them are presented on the slide. Through years, St. Petersburg has won several uh, nominations of one of the most prestigious awards in the world uh, in the field of tourism, the World Travel Awards. The city claimed the title of the world's leading every country to develop because tourism is the backbone of every country. I would say that, you know, today, it's more like tourism doesn't have languages, tourism doesn't have borders, tourism, and we saw that in COVID, we couldn't control the virus, the virus did not need borders. So why did we close? That's a question mark which I still keep asking myself. And we, as Thai, I think we kept working a lot uh, with the government, with the Ministry of Tourism, Aviation, and all the other sectors of the government to say, why is this lockdown existing? Because I, like I always keep saying, and this became a very uh, known dialogue of mine, which I said, the virus didn't need a boarding card to get onto a flight. So why did we really close down and actually got the entire industry impacted? Thai, as you all know, is a very old 1951 established tourism body. It's the largest, like Ibrahimji said, is the largest and the oldest body. Established in 1951 with 3,000 members. I also say that we work very closely with all countries. In even the COVID time, we have actually done an MOU with nearly 12 more countries in, during the COVID time. In totality, we have 28 countries where we have got MOUs to work together. And the countries who don't, I think, are missing a lot. And I think that's where we need to fill the gap. It is acknowledged that India is poised to become a 5 trillion economy by 2025. Yes, we are on the tra trajectory. And the government of India has a very ambitious plan to target to become the third largest socio-economic power in the world. The growth rate for the country coming fiscal years back down to literally 8%. However, what is very important to note that travel, hospitality and tourism sector's contribution is increasing day by day. And we've seen that happen and that's the reason we're all here in this room and in this hall. Tourism, I always believe, can never die because it's a very strong people-to-people -people connect. And during the COVID, it was like we were imprisoned within the walls. Now we need that breath of fresh air. Now is the time for to explore. Now is the time to connect, collaborate, and continue with our celebrations. And we need to move on, and we are. The air, water, ports, roads, highways, industrial infrastructure, and all allied sectors are showing very positive results in India. And the signs of recovery and that is what India needs to encash and fulfill the vision of our Honorable Prime Minister Modi. With e-visa and other facilities provided and opening up in a phased manner and rising travelers' confidence, India will carve a great niche market for itself in the tourism sector and will soon position itself as a regional hub in Southeast Asia. 
and neighboring countries. I actually always say this and I've been again emphasizing on this during the COVID time. We need to build on policies for the countries who are close to us and we all are. And we need to develop those and go beyond our own countries. My tagline to the government of India was that let us say that India is one state and let us say all these countries are one of us. So that is how we need to build tourism. We need to build and invest in tourism policies, more connectivity, more borders to open, more tourism taxes, how we take them, or tourism going beyond. We need to think beyond. We need to think out of the box to say how we can actually make the growth. Like I said, tourism is there to stay and it's always going to stay. So we need to build on our strengths and we need to indulge in this sector to make it a success story for inbound, outbound, and domestic. Because at time to time, we keep needing all three aspects very, very strongly. Some things are very pertinent when I come to talk about tourism. And that is when it leads to how we can boost the competitiveness and build resilience. We need to mitigate social economic impacts on livelihoods. And this, for this, we also need to uh, literally invest in advanced innovation and digital transformation of tourism. Foster sustainability and green growth. Invest in skill gaps because as the world goes, there's going to be a huge gap where skilling is concerned. We need, all countries need to invest in that because it's a known fact that after five years, everyone will have to be skilled again to remain in this industry because the traveler is evolving, the demographic of a destination and everyone is evolving. So we need to coordinate and partner collectively to action and international cooperation. I would like to emphasize on just three more points before I end because we need to see where the travel trends are. And coming to a destination like this, I would like to say to all the stakeholders and my members who are here that we need to see what are we carrying back when we go back because we need to carry back business, the right way of doing business going further. And there are few things which are coming to existence while we move forward. We have seen there's a rise of solo travelers post-COVID. It was a huge number even before COVID, but post-COVID has become much more. As a matter of fact, we see the change. It's 76% more than 2019. So I think we need to invest and say, how can we give experience to the solo traveler and which is going to be the need of the hour. Of course, travel health will always remain a huge concern for us going forward, at least for the next another year or two, unless we really go away from it. We can see there's no one really wearing a mask except a few people and we don't have anything to actually hide our faces beyond it, behind it. But it is still there. So the concern is still there. So we need to move forward with that. The third thing which I always say that we, I said this in a short way, but I'm going to say it more, that increase in travel tech adoption. Because I think we've all adopted the travel technology while we were in the COVID and the travel industry the maximum. But we need to see that the supply chain and the customer interactions, how they can be digitized, how we can use artificial intelligence, how we can do chatbots, how we can do virtual reality, and all these things are into existence and we need to take it forward as each country. And before you decide your destination, people are really going to look into that. And fourth is the travels demand local experiences because we are all going to need those local experiences, traveling to your countries and traveling to mine. We all need those experiences because that's what the traveler is looking out for. And of course, the last is the consumer blend which has come into existence because we've seen there are millions of digital nomads around. So it's business come leisure. And that is what it turns into this world called pleasure where we need to all invest in because anyone who goes in business will be going, taking forward as leisure too. With new beginnings, we create more successes. And I'll just end by saying that nobody can go back to start a new beginning, neither you nor me. But everyone can today start to make a new ending. So let us start today to make a beautiful ending for tomorrow. Thank you so much, OTM, PFS, Sanjeev Ji, Piaz Ji, and people working behind the scenes to make this a success story for each one of us present here. Thank you. Namaskar. Have a lovely day. I, uh, you broached such a serious or an important topic that I could not uh, hold myself from taking two minutes to uh, embark upon what uh, she uh, mentioned, and which is so important this lockdown thing. So, you know, we uh, as trade show organizer and we run a foundation also to promote travel and tourism 
uh, we from the very beginning uh, lobbied with the government uh, that lockdowns are not a solution. The uh, transport and travel should be allowed unrestricted. We in fact uh, went right up to the uh, high courts in some of the states like our uh, hill stations like uh, Uttarakhand and Himachal Pradesh who depend squarely on tourism uh, to uh, sort of uh, you know, uh, lobby with the uh, courts that look at this high time uh, we remove the restrictions. So I just take a minute to convey uh, something which I believe is very, very important for all, especially the governments and as private citizens to pressurize our governments to be aware of what could be the half-life of restrictions. Because like any government policy has a tendency to linger and it is high time that we are aware that we don't let these restrictions linger. For example, uh, you know, the, uh, some of the uh, restrictions and uh, masking and you know, requirement of vaccination. There is a time when we should be able to say that now enough is enough. Now let's get back to normal life. That's what I thought I, thought I would convey to you, which is so important. Thank you. Thank you uh, for summing up what the travel industry uh, needs now and uh, what you have been uh, advocating so uh, you know so ferociously, I would say. And of course, Ms. Maya, for bringing the industry perspective and what we need to do to build the future of this industry together going forward. So, ladies and gentlemen, with that, we come to the end of this uh, inaugural session. But as Sanjeev said, let's get back to business. OTM 2022 September. Uh, awaits uh, all the business transactions. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you to our international partners, to our dignitaries of the dais and of the dais, and of course to all our media friends and all the exhibitors and visitors for uh, being here in OTM in such large numbers. <laughs> Members of the media,
hotel owners like you who should take over and run the show. We will be there. We want you to be with us, but we want to work together. We want to work in a reciprocal way. You have come all the way from all over the world. Mr. Agrawal is the pioneer in this field. He has organized such a big show all over India. And I'm sure that whoever participated with him, whoever associated with him, whoever put faith in him, is never feel bad about it and he is more gathered out of it. Because it's a win-win situation for all. You come here, you get the customers, and we also get the support of you people when we go there. I will not detain my speech for a long. I will once again thank you all of you and looking forward to work together in a better, closer ties for the promotion of the tourism in the state of Maharashtra, which has food, which has the lakes, which has the old temples, which has the sanctuaries, which have all beautiful sports, whatever you look for. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency, for those warm words of welcome. And we thank you for your gracious presence here today. I would now like to request Mr. Al Hassan Al Dabab, Chief Markets Officer of Saudi Tourism Authority, to share with us a few words on the occasion when they are participating in OTM <coughs> as the principal partner country. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Saudi Tourism Authority. Guests, ladies and gentlemen, Minister of Tourism, Government of Maharashtra, Mr. Mangan Loja. It's a privilege to be with you here today. My name is Al Hassan Tabab, I'm the Chief Markets Officer for APAC, Asia Pacific. I'm also joined by my guest, Abdullah Al Hakbani, the Chief International and Executive Affairs Officer. And also, I'm joined by Hazim Al Hazimi, the Chief. Officer. First, I'd like to acknowledge and thank Fairfest for bringing us together here today and for the opportunity to present Saudi at this event. This is my third time in India. And honestly, every time I come to India, I fall more in love with this country. I am also struck by the similarities between our two nations. The Indian people are very warm, kind, and hospitable. We have a word in Arabic that is called hafaw, which means chivalry, the true form of Arabian hospitality. India has always been an important strategic partner for Saudi, spanning across many sectors, healthcare, technology, food, and security. Just this week, the External Affairs Minister, Mr. Jay Shankar, has been in Saudi and emphasizing the importance of the strategic ties between uh, the two countries uh, and the promise of future shared growth between the two countries. Saudi is the fourth largest partner for India and the Indian community is the largest expat community in Saudi Arabia. Therefore, tourism will be a key driver for future growth and further strengthening the ties between the two nations. India is one of our top key source markets and we are planning and yet after the pandemic with the increase in frequency we've noticed that India remains one of the key source market for us. The fact that is that Mauritius is called Little India because our forefathers came from India and there's a lot of cultural heritage, a lot of history, a lot of diplomatic relations which dates for years between both countries. And this is one of the reasons that we believe that India is one of our key markets and will be one of our key markets uh, in the coming years. One thing, one lesson that this pandemic has taught us is to become resilient. Tourism is definitely resilient. We've opened the destination since October. 
and we've reached a certain milestone of attracting around half a million tourists from all over the world. We are extremely confident that OTM is an excellent platform whereby all stakeholders will be there and it will be highly beneficial for the tourism industry. I thank you very much. Thank you. संजीव अग्रवाल है मैं फेयरफेस्ट मीडिया लिमिटेड जो कि दिस ओटीना ओटीएम नामक प्रदर्शनी के आयोजक है उसका चीफ एग्जीक्यूटिव ऑफिसर हूँ ये एक तीन दिन की प्रदर्शनी फर्स्ट टाइम यहाँ जियो में एक 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 अंतर इंटरनेशनल ट्रैवल ट्रेड फेयर जिसमें कि 500 से ज़्यादा विदेशों से और सारे भारतवर्ष से लोग पार्टिसिपेट कर रहे हैं और ये एग्जीबिशन में बताने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं कि कौन सी डेस्टिनेशन खुली हुई है जहां सैलानी जा सकते हैं क्योंकि अब ये कोविड के बाद आहिस्ता आहिस्ता सारी डेस्टिनेशन खुलती जा रही हैं और इसमें सभी को उम्मीद है कि जो एक ये जो मार पड़ी कोविड के दो दो साल लगभग लॉकडाउन वगैरह के कारण इतनी जोर मार पड़ी इस पर्यटन उद्योग पे कि ये बिल्कुल घराशाई हो गया और इसमें हम इसको फिर से एक अच्छे उसके हेल्थ की तरफ ले जाने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं और ये प्रदर्शनी में हमारे यहाँ विश्व के बहुत से बड़े बड़े पार्टिसिपेंट्स जैसे रशिया से एक बहुत बड़ा पार्टिसिपेशन आया है और सऊदी अरेबिया से बहुत बड़ा पार्टिसिपेशन आया है इसके अलावा कतर और इंडोनेशिया और कोरिया और ऐसे बहुत से देशों के बड़े बड़े पवेलियन लगे हैं और उनके वहाँ से उस पवेलियन में उनके प्राइवेट पार्टिसिपेंट्स जो होटेलियर वो डायरेक्टली यहाँ पर लोगों को बताना चाहते हैं कि आप हमारे यहाँ आ सकते हैं सब कुछ सेफ है बिल्कुल ओपन है और हम आपकी सेवा में हाजिर हैं ऐसे ही हमारे भारतवर्ष में मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ टूरिज़्म का बहुत बड़ा पेविलियन है इसके अलावा गुजरात गोवा अंडमान निकोबार केरला और ऐसे बहुत से राज्यों के बड़े बड़े पवेलियन हैं और इनके भी होटेलियर सब वहाँ पर बैठ के बता रहे हैं कि भई आप ये जो इतना बड़ा यहाँ पर एक दिवाली और जाड़े का टूरिज़्म का सीज़न आता है उसमें बहुत लोग जाते हैं तो ये इनको बताने आए हैं कि आप हमारे यहाँ आ सकते हैं पर्यटन मंत्री यहाँ के महाराष्ट्र के लोढ़ा साहब आज मॉर्निंग में आए थे और वो बहुत इम्प्रेस होके गए हैं वो हमारे साथ कोलाबरेट करके और कुछ प्रोग्राम करना चाहते हैं जिससे कि महाराष्ट्र में भी पर्यटन को बढ़ावा मिले दो शब्द मैं कहना चाहूँगा ये रशिया और भारत के बीच में पर्यटन की एक बहुत बड़ी संभावना है क्योंकि अभी बहुत ज़्यादा लोग न भारतीय रशिया जाते थे और न रशियन भारत आते थे लेकिन अभी जो दुनिया भर में एक चल रहा है चक्कर या तो ये कोविड का या फिर वीसा प्रोसेसिंग में डिले है और या फिर कुछ जो उनकी इकोनॉमिक रिसेशन है वेस्टर्न कंट्रीज़ में और कुछ थोड़ा वॉर लाइक सिचुएशन कुछ कुछ प्रांतों में है वेस्टर्न कंट्रीज़ में 
तो कुल मिला के देखिए तो अभी भारतीय जो बाहर जाना चाहता है उनको बहुत ज़्यादा चॉइस नहीं मिल रही है क्योंकि वीसा में बहुत डिले हो रहा है वेस्टर्न कंट्री का तो ऐसे टाइम में रशियन यहाँ पर कह रहे हैं कि भाई आप रशिया आइए आपको उसी स्टैंडर्ड की या उससे भी अच्छी स्टैंडर्ड की बहुत सुंदर डेस्टिनेशन मिलेंगे और अभी जो करीब एक लाख भारतीय कोविड के पहले रशिया जाना जाते थे वो शायद दस गुना या उससे ज़्यादा भी हो सकता है आने वाले टाइम में वैसे ही रशियन जो इंडिया में आते थे वो काफ़ी बढ़ सकता है अभी तक वो गोवा और कुछ प्रांतों में ही जा सकते थे लेकिन वो अब सारे भारतवर्ष में जा सकते हैं क्योंकि उनके लिए भी अब पश्चिमी देशों में जाने में अभी कुछ दिक्कत है कुछ उनको रोक लगाई जा रही है तो वो इंडिया आ सकते हैं तो इस उद्देश्य से हम दोनों पक्षों को ये बताने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं कि भारत और रशिया का एक जो पुराना जो ये दोस्ती का संबंध रहा है ये टूरिज़्म के क्षेत्र में भी एक बहुत बड़ा बहुत बड़ा कीर्तिमान स्थापित कर सकता है नाउ इन इंग्लिश और और कुछ प्रश्न है तो बताइए मैं बताऊँगा तो ये बहुत अच्छा प्रश्न पूछा है इन्होंने कि कितने लोग रशिया में जाते हैं कितने लोग इंडिया में आते हैं और कितने इंडिया से बाहर जाते हैं तो इसको अगर ऐसा स्टैटिस्टिक्स देखें कोविड के पहले करीब 25 मिलियन यानी कि ढाई करोड़ भारतीय विदेश जाते हैं विभिन्न विभिन्न देशों में वैसे ही रशिया में करीब ढाई करोड़ 25 मिलियन विदेशों से लोग आते हैं और भारतवर्ष में करीब एक करोड़ बाहर से आते हैं तो अगर आप इनबाउंड का देखें तो हमारा एक करोड़ बाहर से आता है रशिया में ढाई करोड़ जाता है और अगर आउटबाउंड का देखें तो हम ढाई करोड़ टूरिस्ट बाहर भेजते हैं तो हमारे यहाँ ये बाहर से बुलाने की और भी काफ़ी संभावनाएं हैं और हमारा डोमेस्टिक बहुत स्ट्रॉन्ग है वो देखिए किसी और कंट्री में इतना शायद नहीं है खास करके छोटी कंट्रीज में क्योंकि यहाँ इतना कुछ विभिन्न राज्यों में इतनी विविधता है कि अपना जो डोमेस्टिक टूरिज्म है वो काफ़ी स्ट्रॉन्ग है सर एक छोटा सा इंग्लिश में हाँ नमस्ते माय नेम इज संजीव अग्रवाल आई एम द चेयरमैन एंड सी ओ फेयर फेस्ट मीडिया लिमिटेड हु आर द ऑर्गेनाइजर्स ऑफ दिस एग्जीबिशन कॉल्ड ओ टी एम इज अ थ्री डे एग्जीबिशन फोकस्ड ऑन ट्रेवल ट्रेड and it is a b2b exhibition where there are exhibitors more than 500 exhibitors from all over the world and all over india and they hope to interact with travel trade here and uh, travel trade has already started coming uh, even on the first day morning in very large number there is a lot of enthusiasm uh, covid has uh, spelled a kind of a disaster for travel and tourism industry everyone knows and now it is kind of you know uh, springing back to normalcy and there is a lot of potential for uh, people to travel not only all over india but also abroad but at the same time there are some uh, you know after effects of covid like visa problem in many countries like western countries it is not easy to get a visa quickly so there are other parts of the world which are here to cater to the india to the indians and they are here to say that look you come to our country for example russia saudi arabia qatar and uh, korea indonesia so indonesia for example you can get a visa on arrival so this is the idea that look through the show we want to inform the travel industry which are the destinations which are open hassle free where they can push their clients to go to the, those destinations and uh, there is a fair competition between the indian destinations and international destinations uh, there are very beautiful uh, displays put in by uh, various countries and uh, this facility itself geo world convention center it's only of its kind in india it is the best exhibition center in india it has set a new standard and it, it has helped otm set a new standard uh, which is like 5 star plus and uh, This edition of OTM is the second edition within 2022. We had one in March, and then at that time the need was felt that there is one more uh, edition required because many of the countries were not open yet. And in February next year, we will have the regular edition of OTM, which will be on the two floors, 
about twice the size of this edition and the mood is very upbeat in travel and tourism industry and we hope that it will uh, soon relapse back to normalcy. Thank you very much. Thank you. नीचे जाके ना विजुअल जो नहीं बनाया है बना लेना मोबाइल उस वगैरह से सब ले लो अपना अपना यस आराम से ले आराम से हाँ हो गया मैं